everyone, I'm Gina Wieselman of MySweetPaper.com and thank you for joining us for the July 2020 Stampin' Class by Mail featuring the Flowers for Every Season Suite by Stampin' Up. I've teamed up with Brenda Cardinal, another Stampin' Up demonstrator, to offer these monthly classes by mail. This month it's Brenda's turn to show you how to make your cards and next month it'll be my turn. Make sure to watch to the end of the video to see a sneak peek of the cards I designed for next month, as well as some bonus opportunities for signing up. Have fun, and here's Brenda. Thanks, Gina. Hi, everyone. I'm Brenda Cardinal of stampintulip.stampinup.net, and I'm excited to show you how to stamp and assemble your three card designs using the Flowers for Every Season suite by Stampin' Up. This suite is from the new 2020-2021 annual catalog and has some great coordinating products. This suite is all about the brand new 2020-2022 in colors. The in colors include Bumblebee, Cinnamon Cider, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, and Misty Moonlight. From the suite, we'll be using the Jar of Flowers stamp set, the Jar Punch, the Mason Jar Shaker Domes, the Flowers for Every Season Designer Series Paper, Ribbon Combo Pack, and Gems. We'll also be using the Many Mates Stamp Set and several ink pads including Bumblebee, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, Misty Moonlight, and the Tuxedo Black Memento. In addition, we'll be using the Stitched Shapes dies and the Tasteful Textures 3D Embossing Folder. If you purchase a class kit from either Gina or me, the images used from the punch, dies, and embossing folder have been pre-cut and embossed for you. Also included in your kit is a blender pen unless you've purchased a previous class from us where one was included. The adhesives we'll be using include dimensionals, mini glue dots, multi-purpose liquid glue, and a new stamp and seal. And you'll also want to have a paper snips handy. Plus, I'll show you how to use a couple tools to make paper crafting easier. Please reach out to Gina or me if you need any supplies, would like to talk about becoming a Stamping Up demonstrator, or to host a stamping event. Let's get started with our first card design. Our first card is the Just Jade Roses. If you are taking the stamping class by mail from Gina or me, all your parts and pieces needed for each of the three card designs have been cut to the correct size, packaged with envelopes, and shipped right to your home. If you've not purchased a kit from one of us, Pause the video here to cut and prep all the parts and pieces you will need for our first card and then come back when you are ready. We'll begin by doing our stamping. We'll stamp first on the oval Magenta Madness. This has been cut with the Stitch Shapes dies. We'll stamp using the Magenta Madness ink pad. This is one of the five brand new ink colors. I think this is my favorite. I just love this pink. Okay, we'll make sure we get that really inked up. And then we'll stamp that image right in the center of our oval. And put a little extra pressure on there, make sure we get good transfer. There we go. Next, we'll stamp our Whisper White cardstock with the inside greeting. For the class, we um, suggested the Many Mate stamp set, but if you didn't purchase that, you can pick the stamp set of your choice. I'm gonna make mine a Get Well card. And then if you'd like, you can also stamp your envelope. It's always fun to get fun mail, um, but this just adds that extra element to the fun mail. Okay, that is all of our stamping. So now we'll assemble. We're going to start by adding our narrow strip of the Flowers for Every Season Designer Series paper. And because it's so narrow, I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue to add that. So you don't need a lot of glue. Remember liquid glue uh, moves around so just a little narrow line and we're going to place that so it's about an eighth of an inch from the bottom. Okay. Put a little pressure on there. Okay there we go. And then I'll just take my paper snips and trim off the excess. When possible, I like to cut my um, designer series paper a little longer and then trim off any excess so that I make sure it doesn't end up short. So there's that. 
Next, I'll take the Just Jade card base and I'll fold that along the crease line. And this to make sure I give it a little extra crease, I'll use my bone folder. And then we're going to use the brand new Stampin' Seal to adhere everything. Now I show you the packaging because um, it's, it's an interesting way that Stampin' Up! decided to package their um, stamp and seal. And I keep the, it's actually like a Ziploc bag. And I keep it because when I take off the cover, I'm going to store that right back in here so I don't lose it. So just a little tip there. All right, this works just like our snail did, although it's got um, better grip, if you will. Okay, and then we'll put that on the inside of our card base here, centering it so we have an equal border all the way around. A little pressure there. Next, we'll add our Just Jade textured piece. This has been embossed with a Tasteful Textures 3D embossing folder. We'll add this to the front of our card and we're gonna center this so we have equal borders all the way around as well. Next, we'll add our designer series paper starting with the bumblebee patterned one. We'll add a little adhesive here. And we're going to uh, turn our square into a diamond. We're gonna position it so it's about an eighth of an inch from the left side. And we wanna make sure that the top and bottom point forms a straight line, okay? And then we'll add our roses. And it's kind of directional, so you can kind of decide which way you want your roses to go. What do you think? I think this way. All right, so then when you place this one, again, an eighth of an inch from the right side, we want to make our, sure our top and bottom points line up. And then we also want to make sure we have a, like a straight line that goes like this across horizontally. So I think it needs to come down just a little bit. And over a little bit. Okay, there we go. Then we'll use dimensionals to pop up our Magenta Madness oval. And I'm going to use four dimensionals on here. We'll pull that release paper. And then we'll center that in our two diamonds. Okay. And then we have our ribbon. Now, if you purchase a kit from us, we'll tie your bows for you. Um, if not, let me show you how I tied that bow. So you make a loop, you'll wrap the longer tail around the back, and then you'll push a loop through the hole and then pull. And then you just work the tails back and forth a little bit to get the size bow that you want. And when you get there, you want to pull it just a little tighter. There we go. And then you'll take your paper snips and trim your ends. And then we'll take our glue dots. one of those up I'm gonna put it off to the side here uh, bottom right side not on this on the oval but just below it so it tucks up like that and now we're gonna add our flowers for every season gems and again we'll bring back the liquid glue and to do this I'm gonna open my card up flat and 
I'm going to introduce you to a fun tool. It's called the Take Your Pick tool. And the end I'm going to use for this is the putty end. See that has a little bit of putty on there. And so it's a little sticky. And the reason I wanted to show you this tool is because it is really handy to pick up small items and place them. So we'll start by placing our glue. And we're going to put one here and one here and one down here. Okay. So I have my glue. You have to work kind of quickly because you make sure that the glue doesn't dry. But I'm going to pick up one of the Just Jade larger ones. See how easy that is to pick it up? And I'll place it here. And then I'll pick up a small one. And I'll place it here. And then maybe another large one. Oops. I had a little extra glue there, didn't I? There we go. So this putty tip is pretty cool. So when it becomes less tacky, you just pinch off the end. Okay. And if you, if it's not quite long enough, you just give this a little twist and it'll push a little bit more out. And I'll caution you, the twist has to be very small. Otherwise you end up with a great big long piece of putty. So um, this is a great tool. Take your pick tool. All right. So then we have our gems placed and there we go. Our next card is the Misty Moonlight Flowers. And here are the parts and pieces you'll need for this card. If you order a Stampin' Kit by mail from us, we included two pieces of Misty Moonlight cardstock. One is not punched, and one has been punched with the jar punch. Now we did this because if you purchase the stamp set and the punch as a bundle, you have the punch to um, punch your shapes out. If you did not, we wanted to make sure that you had the jar shapes. So we're going to begin by doing our stamping. And if you did purchase the jar punch, then we're going to stamp the jar image three times on the Misty Moon cardstock using Misty Moon ink. And because I'm right-handed, you'll notice I stamped one jar on one side, flipped my cardstock around, and then stamped two other jars. And I did outside and then inside. And the reason I did that is because when I go to punch my jars out, I always have a handle on the left side. So I'd punch this one, and then I'd punch, sorry, the middle one, and then I'd flip it around and I'd punch that one. Now, if you didn't purchase the jar punch, because this stamp set is a photopolymer, it's pretty easy to see right through and stamped the jar on there. So that's pretty easy. But I have another tool that I wanted to show you that'll help with perfect placement. And that is the Stamparatus. So my setup for the Stamparatus today is I have um, the foam pad because I'm using a photopolymer stamp set and I have my little grid paper. So what you wanna do is you will take the stamp off the block and you'll mount it anywhere on your um, panel here. And for inking purposes, it's always nice to put a stamp set underneath this panel so that it's a nice flat surface. And then what you wanna do is you wanna ink up your jar stamp and then we'll stamp it down. Okay. Then, because we included this piece, you can frame 
the stamped image with this leftover piece, add your magnet so it doesn't move, and then you just drop your jar right back in that hole. I think I had, I think it goes this way actually. So it's right in there, okay? And then you'd ink up your stamp again, stamp it down. Oops, and the beauty of this is I missed a little bit there. So that's another great feature of the Stamparatus is that you can just go right back to it, put the pressure on, and it stamps in exactly the same place. And there we go, it's perfect. All right, Stamparatus, a great tool. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. Also in your kit, you got two pieces of Whisper White cardstock that are exactly the same. The one is for the outside and the other one is for the inside. It opens, this is kind of a fun fold, it opens this way, okay? So let's stamp our flowers first on one of them. Again with the Misty Moonlight ink, ink that up really well. And then, oh, a little bit more. And then we're gonna stamp that about a half an inch from the top and centered left and right. Okay, a little extra pressure. Great. And then if you want an inside greeting, go ahead and add that right now. Okay. And then if you want, go ahead and add something to your envelope. All right. So that's our stamping. And now we're going to add a little dimension to our flowers by bringing in a blender pen. And we are going to move some of that Misty Moonlight ink around on some of the images. What I decided to do is take my blender pen and fill in some of these berries. So I'm taking some of the ink from the edges and I'm moving it to the inside. Okay, and then I'd like to add a little light blue to my flower. So I'm going to start with this posy here, and I'm just going to start on the ink and then move it out to the petals. That one I'm just going to kind of go around in a circle. This one I'm going to do the same thing that I did with that last posy. This is just subtle, right? We don't, I don't want to fill it in. I want it to be nice and soft. And when I designed this card, you know what I thought of? I thought of the Delph porcelain um, pottery that come from the Netherlands. I just, it made me think of that. I got to visit that many years ago. It was just so fascinating to see how they, they painted the porcelain and fired it and, and so forth. But it was all blues and whites. So there you go. That's all we need to do. Just add a little depth to our flowers. All right. Now we're going to be begin assembling our card and we're going to start with the back here and we're going to work our way up. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to add our designer series paper strips to either side of this la uh, larger piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I think it's probably wide enough that I can do that with my stamp and seal. So I'm going to put a little bit on this end and then so I can hold on to it easier. I'm going to flip it around. and just put some along the way. And this is somewhat directional. You wanna think about that just a little bit. And notice we're just gonna have like a little 16th of an inch of the Whisper White cardstock showing. So I'm just going to go like that. And then, oops, got a little extra. Better move that. Okay, and again, same distance, about a sixteenth of an inch. 
and then I'll come back with my paper snips and trim off the excess. There we go. And then we'll add this to our Misty Moonlight back piece. You know, what's really great about this uh, stamp and seal, stamp and seal, pardon me, um, is that you don't have to do that little check thing that we used to do with the um, snail. And I catch myself doing it anyways, but the way they designed the adhesive when they put it down is it's actually perforated a bit. And so you, um, when you stop, it actually breaks. So that's pretty cool. All right. So we want to have equal borders on the left and right side. Oops, I keep, let's see. Okay. I think that's pretty good. All right. And then we're going to bring in our long piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock and we're going to crease that again using our bone folder. Okay. And then we're going to attach the flowers that we stamped on the front. I call this piece, this Misty Moonlight piece, our card base, because that's the piece that opens. Okay, and then we're going to center that up so that we have equal borders all the way around. Oops, a little crooked there. Let's see if I can pull it a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then our greeting we're going to add that to the inside of our card base. Now this is the stamp and seal. We also have a stamp and seal plus and this that's for your heavy duty lifting. So anything that's thicker, that's um, bulkier, you'd use a stamp and seal plus. All right. And then we're going to add this to the backing. All right. And we want to center this. So again, we have the same size border showing on the left and right side. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now we're going to add our jar and we're gonna start out by using the baker's twine and we're gonna wrap that around twice and then we're gonna tie a knot. And then we'll trim our tails. It's kind of fun, this um, Flowers for Every Season ribbon combo pack. There's three different uh, ribbons in that pack, so we can really have a lot of fun with that. Now, I want to pop this up just a little bit, but not too much because I think it'll look disjointed. So instead of using dimensionals for this, we're going to come back with our glue dots and we're going to add the jar using glue dots. Do you guys all know this trick about adding um, ribbon to your dimensionals or your sorry your glue dots? This way you only expose one at a time. Mm -hmm. A really fun trick. Okay, so we have our glue dots on there. Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna add one to the middle too. So I have five. I have two at the top two down here at the bottom, and then one in the middle. Okay, and then tuck the jar up towards the flowers. We wanna center that left and right or wherever you think looks nice. 
And then we're going to come back in with our gems again, our multi-purpose liquid glue, and our take your pick tool. And we're going to add some gems to the three posies. So just add a little bit more texture. All right, so drop your glue down. Take your pick tool, pull off the cover, make sure you don't, doesn't fall apart on you again. And then I'm gonna grab a large one for this one. And I think I'll do a large one for this one. And I'm gonna grab a small one for this one. There we go. Our last card is the Magenta Madness Sugar card. And here are the parts and pieces you'll need for this card. We'll start off by doing our stamping. This one has quite a lot of stamping. So we'll start with our Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And we're gonna start by stamping our jar image on the smallest piece of Whisper White cardstock. So we'll ink up our jar. And we wanna center that right or as close to the center as we can. A little extra pressure. There we go. Next we'll stamp our flower stems. Notice that uh, one end of the stamp is straight across and the other end has like the bottoms of the stems. So we wanna make sure we orient it uh, the right way so that we place the top of the stems, the one that goes straight across, at the top of our jar. So let's ink that up. Stamp that down. Okay. So there's our jar and stems. On a thick piece of Whisper White cardstock, we're gonna stamp our flower image, our tulip flower image. And if you've taken the class from us, you'll make three of these. So we'll stamp this image three times. Probably only do it once um, for our purposes today, but you would use this piece to stamp your image three times. So sometimes when I'm working with a larger stamp, I like to lay the stamp down on my work surface and then pick the stamp pad up and ink it that way. So I make sure I get plenty of ink on there. Okay, and then I stamp it a second time and a third time. All right. So that's all the stamping we're gonna do with our Memento pad. Next, we're going to switch to our Just Jade pad and we're gonna add some water to our jar. All right, so we're gonna mount the small jar just the opposite of what you would think. This is kind of a new thing with Stampin' Up! So rather than stamping it so we get the detail, we're going to flip it over so we just have the out the the solid image, okay? And we're going to ink that up. Okay, so like that. And then before we stamp it on our jar, we're gonna stamp it off once, twice, and then we're gonna go to our jar. We're gonna line the bottom of the jar up. I just want a just a soft color of water. See how that works? So this is also called a two-step stamp set because we can take an image and we can break it into multiple stamps so that we can um, stamp an outline and then we can fill it in, all right? And this is a reversible stamp. It's kind of a cool concept. All right, so now we have water in our jar so our flowers don't die and we're gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna do our stamping with Magenta Madness. So we're gonna start by taking this narrowest strip of this, um, Magenta Madness cardstock, and we're gonna take this border stamp, and we're gonna create a little background by stamping this border stamp at a diagonal, and we're just going to kind of change the angle that we stamp every time, so it looks a little bit more random, okay? And you'll also notice I'm crisscrossing a previous image so that, again, 
stays connected, it looks random. All right, and maybe just a little bit there. Okay, so there we go. We're all just gonna take this stamp and we're going to stamp a border on the top and bottom of our inside piece, okay? So I'll ink that up. Uh, probably about, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch from the top and bottom cut edge. All right. And then if you'd like to stamp a greeting, go ahead and do that. Again, I'm using the Many Mates stamp set. There we go. All righty. So there, we have all our stamping done. Now we're going to color. So I'm going to bring in the two things that we need to color. I want to color my stems. That'll give them more definition and make them pop a little bit more. And then I want to color my um, flowers. So the way we're going to do that, again, is with the blender pen and um, an ink. All right, let's get started. And when you color with a blender pen, you always want to start with your lightest color and work towards your darkest color or the most um, pigmented color. So in this case, we're going to start with a bumblebee. So we'll bring in our bumblebee pad here. And the way I'm going to create a color palette is I'm going to bring in a small clear block and I'm going to ink up my block. And there we go. So I have a little color to work with. So I'm going to pick up some of that color and I'm going to color the posies in the bumblebee. And I'm treating this more like a watercolor technique, so I'm not concerned about coloring it in exactly. You're coloring on thick Whisper White cardstock, and that's the preferred cardstock when you're coloring with a blender pen. It doesn't uh, roll or doesn't get quite as saturated quickly, so you can color, uh, um, so you can add more color um, than you would if you were working with like a, the regular Whisper White cardstock. So the other thing is if you want to add more color, make it more intense, let it dry just a little bit, and then you can come back in and add a little bit more color. Maybe we want some of these to be a little deeper. Okay. Now we're going to switch colors and yet we want to do two things. First, we want to take our blender pen. We want to scribble on a piece of scratch paper until it bleeds out to nothingness, okay? Then we know we're ready for the next color. So the other thing we wanna do is we wanna take our block and we wanna clean our block off. I'm gonna use my Simply Chamois to do that. Mine's been loved a lot. It used to be this really pretty purple, not so much anymore. All right, and then we're gonna to go to our Just Jade. That's the next lightest color. And we're going to pick up some ink on our clear block. And then we're going to color all of our leaves and stems. The fun thing about working with a blender pen is that it, it fades to a lighter shade, right? So as you start coloring after you've picked up the ink, it's it's darker and then it goes to a lighter color. So you can do some fun shading things. Okay, did I get all the stems? I think so. And now we're gonna color our stems in our jar. There we go. All right, scribble out the Just Jade ink from our blender pen tip. Now, these blender pens come in a set of three when you purchase them. And some people say they use all three at a time and they make like, this is the green end and this is the yellow end and, and so forth. So they have um, a different blender pen um, for every color not every color, but you know, for the color, 
group, I guess. So all greens and all blues and stuff like that. All right, so we're done with our jar. Now we're gonna come back with, I'm gonna go Misty Moonlight next. I just feel like the um, Magenta Madness is the most pigmented and the one that is most intense. So I'm just gonna pick up a little of the Misty Moonlight and we're going to color, I call them lilacs. They kind of remind me of lilacs here. Okay, I think I've got all the lilacs. Again, we'll scribble until we Get rid of the misty moonlight. We'll clean the misty moonlight off our block. Then we'll bring in the magenta madness. And now we'll color our tulips. Now the tulips are a little bit bigger, so you can really do some fun things with the shading if you want to. So I'm just going to take a hint from how the flowers are drawn and put a little bit more color where there's a uh, darker spot on the image. So like that would be probably this, the center of the tulip there. And I'm going to assume that was going to be a little darker. And this tulip's a little smaller, so it hasn't fully opened, so maybe I'll make that a little darker. Now, blender pens don't seem to be your thing here. Um, although they're really fun to play with. Stampin' Up! came out with Stampin' Blends that are in four of the five in colors, and they're super fun to color with. And I will show you a couple samples in a few minutes here that I've used the Stampin' Blends on with rather than the blender pens. All right. There we go. And I'll scribble this one more time to make sure that it's just all set and ready to go next time I use my blender pen. I should mention that Simply Chamois is a great uh, cleanup tool. What I like about this versus our cleanup pad is that, especially with our photopolymer stamps, there's no lint that attaches to it. So it keeps your stamps lint free. And then um, I just purchased one of these uh, stamp cases, the narrower ones, to keep my Simply Chamois in. It comes pre-moistened, um, but it'll eventually dry out and all you have to do is add water. If it becomes saturated with ink and you wanna clean it out, just add some water to it let it get fully saturated and then squeeze it a couple times just like you would a chamois cloth and the ink you'll get rid of that ink so simply chamois okay now we're going to start assembling our shaker dough so we'll start out by taking our jar that we stamped and colored and notice my card here so i didn't add gems to this one but if you purchase the gems and you want to add a few gems so you have some shaken in your shaker dome take some of your gems many as you want, a lot or a few, whatever you'd prefer. And we wanna move them all to the center. Okay, like that. And then our shaker dome actually has adhesive on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna start with the bottom and we're gonna pull that off and we're going to set that down on our, or over, I should say, our jar image that we stamped and colored and then put some pressure on it. And look at that, now it's a shaker. All right, so then we'll take our wider magenta madness strip and that's the one that we're gonna place over our shaker dome. And to do that, we need to punch the jar image. So what we'll do is we'll work our punch upside down 
and we'll load our cardstock in till it hits the back bumper and then we want to center it and what I'm looking at is at the top here I want the distance between the edge of the punch to the cardstock to be the same on both sides so that's how I center that okay so it's pushed all the way in looks centered and then punch okay so there we go you can save this for a future project then what we do is we pull the paper that release paper from the top of the shaker dome okay like that and then we just push the dome through our punched image and put some pressure on it and there we go pretty simple okay and now it's all about assembly so let's bring our magenta madness card base in give that a nice crease with our bone folder and we'll use our stamp and seal we're going to start by putting our inside greeting in there Next, we'll add this border piece. We'll line that to the left side of our card front. Then we'll add our posy piece to the left edge of our shaker dome. And it's going to be a little tricky to work with now. So we'll, because there's that dome in the way. So we'll just make it happen. And we want about a quarter of an inch of our posies sticking out. Now this paper is directional. So be sure your posies aren't standing on their head. And then we'll trim off any excess that we have. Okay. All right. And then we'll add this to the card front. So. the adhesive however you can make it happen and then we're going to have about three eighths of an inch sticking out on this side okay and it looks like a little sticking out up there so i'll bring my paper snips in and we'll just trim it off so it's nice and even All right, then we need to fussy cut the flowers out. So we'll take our paper snips and we'll come in here and I'm gonna leave a little white border. And I'm not gonna go in every nook and cranny To get nice, uh, crisp cut lines, it's better to move your paper than it is to move your scissors. So keep even pressure on your scissors and move your paper.
Okay. And then we want to cut this straight across. There we go. And then we're going to pop this one up using dimensionals. I think three is good. Peel the papers off the dimensionals. And then we want to tuck that as close as possible to the jar. Okay. The last thing we need to do is add our ribbon. So we'll just tie a knot. This is the third ribbon in the ribbon combo pack. Okay, there we go. And we'll trim the end. And we'll add that with a glue dot. And we'll tuck that in nice and tight as well. All right. I had a lot of fun creating with this suite. Let me show you a few more samples. I took the flower spray from our first card and turned it into a flower bouquet. I added a piece of vellum to soften the magenta madness cardstock to blend in with our designer series paper. And as I mentioned, another alternative to blender pens to color is our Stampin' Blends. We have them in four of the five new in colors. So for the Bumblebee, I substituted our crushed curry. Remember how I said you could keep that magenta madness jar that we punched out for our third card? And here's what I created with it. Now the suite has a lot of fun elements, but we also have some extra elements to be able to add to your cards in the in colors. So for accenting our greeting, I used the enamel dots. And then we also have um, gingham ribbon in the bumblebee color as well. When I saw that bumblebee gingham, I thought of the sunflowers, so I created this card. Our greeting here is from the Timeless Tulip Stamp Set that we used in a previous Stampin' Class by Mail. And then I saw this idea when I was doing some research and I just had to stamp it and share it with you because I thought it was so cute. Um, this paper is from the Flowers for Every Season. These two come from the In Color Designer Series paper. And I have to be honest, I wasn't sure what this stamp was when I saw it in the stamp set. And then when I saw this idea, I was like, oh, it can be a straw. So cute. And we can't have flowers for every season without Christmas. So the Designer Series paper has a poinsettia pattern. And so I created this Christmas card. And this one has a fun fold. We're going to have to use this for one of our Stampin' Classes by Mail because it's so adorable. Um, we also have in-color ribbon in each of the five colors. And the greeting for this card comes from the Winter Woods stamp set. There's also a second bundle with this suite of products. So it has the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set and the Sunflower dies. So let me show you a couple samples I made using that. Look at how stunning that sunflower is when it's die cut. And here's that in color ribbon cinnamon cider. The suite also has some card bases in the five in colors. You get two of each color and they're larger than your standard card base. They're six and a quarter by four and a quarter. And they have this fun white polka dot border on the outside and it's white on the inside. And then they have really fun envelopes to coordinate with them as well. So let me show you a sample using that. I had to stamp on my envelope, of course. And then here we go. So we have a shaker card with those sunflowers. I chose a Many Mates greeting set for my greetings. And let me just show you a couple quick and easy cards using the Many Mates and just the designer series paper with a little ribbon. They're just so pretty. Many Mates is also sold as a bundle and it has the many medallions dies and they are so elegant. Just look at that. So let me show you a couple of samples with that. Masculine card. There's the die cuts. There's our many mate stamp set. And look at this. Look at how pretty that is. 
and there you go. Thanks again for participating in our Stampin' Class by Mail. And now here's Gina with a few more things. Thanks for showing us how to make those beautiful cards, Brenda. If you ordered a Class by Mail kit from either Brenda or me, make sure to follow the link in the email that shared this video with you to access the special Pinterest page that Brenda and I have curated to show you even more ways to use your supplies. Next month, it's my turn to design and share the cards with you, and I'm so excited to share a sneak peek of the three card designs using the Playful Pet suite of Stampin' Up! products from the 2020-2021 annual catalog. We'll be making three different card designs, including one that features a fun fold, and we'll be using a coloring technique with blender pens. From the suite, we'll be using the Pampered Pets Stamps, Playful Pets Designer Series Paper, Playful Pets Trim, and Playful Pets Trinkets. We'll also be using some elements that will be pre-cut, punched, or embossed for you if you order a kit from either Brenda or me. These elements include things from the Pets dies, Layering Circles dies, Tasteful Labels dies, the Banner Triple Punch, and the Tasteful Textile 3D Embossing Folder. Our ink colors for August are Tuxedo Black Memento, Real Red, and Basic Gray. Because we'll be adding some fun color to the pets that we stamp, a blender pen will be included in the class kit for anybody who hasn't received a blender pen from us already. If you've already gotten a blender pen, just make sure to pull that out from your previous kits and use that in August as well. The deadline to register and guarantee your kit supplies is August 5th, 2020. We also have a bonus deadline of July 27th, and if you sign up by this date, you'll receive two extra completed cards with envelopes packaged and shipped right along with your August kit. We also have a referral bonus if you find new friends to take the Stampin' Class by mail with you. You can find details about these bonus opportunities in the emails that Brenda and I send. If you're not already on one of our email lists, just contact one of us to get all the information you need about this and other fun opportunities with Stampin' Up! As always, please let us know if you have any feedback about the class by mail, and happy stamping!